Al Capone, also known as Scarface, was one of the most infamous American mobsters during the Prohibition era. He gained notoriety as the leader of the Chicago Outfit, a powerful organized crime syndicate. Capone's criminal empire was built on bootlegging, gambling, and other illegal activities, making him a wealthy and feared figure in the underworld. Despite his criminal activities, Capone was known for his charitable work in Chicago, gaining him a level of public support and admiration. However, Capone's reign of terror came to an end when he was finally convicted of tax evasion and sentenced to prison in 1931. During his time in prison, Capone's health deteriorated, and he was eventually released on parole in 1939. Following his release, Capone lived out the rest of his days in Florida, away from the criminal life that once defined him. Born in Sicily in 1897, Charles Lucky Luciano immigrated to the United States at a young age, setting the stage for his rise as one of the most influential mobsters in American history. As he grew up in New York City, Luciano quickly became involved in the world of organized crime, making connections and gaining a reputation as a cunning and strategic leader. Luciano's intelligence and business acumen allowed him to take control of the Italian-American Mafia, restructuring it into a more efficient and profitable organization known as the Commission. Under Luciano's leadership, the Mafia expanded its influence beyond traditional territories, branching out into various industries such as gambling, labor unions, and even Hong Dutch Schultz was a notorious American mobster during the Prohibition era, known for his involvement in bootlegging and organized crime. Schultz's real name was Arthur Flegenheimer, born in the Bronx, New York in 1902, to German-Jewish immigrant parents. As a young man, Schultz worked various odd jobs before getting involved in the criminal underworld of New York City during the 1920s. Schultz quickly rose through the ranks of organized crime, establishing his own bootlegging operation and gaining a reputation for being ruthless and violent. By the late 1920s, Dutch Schultz became one of the wealthiest and most powerful mobsters in New York controlling a vast empire of speakeasies and illegal breweries. However, Schultz's reign of power would come to an end when he became the target of federal investigations and rival mob factions. In the early 20th century, a young Joseph Bonanno arrived in the United States, destined to become one of the most powerful mafia bosses in American history. He quickly rose through the ranks of the mafia, establishing close ties with other prominent mob figures and solidifying his own influence within the organization. As the head of the Bonanno crime family, Joseph Bonanno became known as the Last Don, a title that captured his status as one of the final old-school mafia bosses. Under Bonanno's leadership, the crime family flourished, engaging in various illegal activities such as gambling, extortion, and drug trafficking, solidifying their power and wealth. However, Bonanno's reign was not without its challenges, as internal power struggles and external law enforcement pressure threatened to destabilize the family and his position as the last Don. In the heart of New York City, John Gotti rose through the ranks to become one of the most infamous mob bosses in American history, earning the nickname the Teflon Don. With his charismatic personality and strategic mind, Gotti quickly became the head of the powerful Gambino crime family, orchestrating various criminal activities with ease and cunning. Under Gotti's leadership, the Gambino crime family thrived, controlling a vast empire of illegal operations, from gambling and loan sharking to drug trafficking and murder for hire. Despite his aura of invincibility, John Gotti's reign came to an end when he was arrested and later convicted on charges of racketeering, conspiracy, and multiple murders, leading to a life sentence in prison.